Well, it's good to be out today. Chilly morning, strong north wind, chance of snow tomorrow. But as you can see, the road is uh, is actually dry underfoot, and it's um, what is it, five or six days since I did my uh, third observed ride with the Institute of Advanced Motorists, motorcyclists. So I've just come out today for a little bit of a practice. I just feel as though the um, the homework intro is beginning to fill up a little bit. And I think, I feel like I'm gradually internalising some of the lessons. But uh, on uh, last Sunday, Dave gave me some stuff to work on. So today's agenda really for this ride, I always have a, a purpose for my training rides. I think that's so important. Just don't come out with nothing in mind. Don't try and hit all the objectives. But uh, try, and, try and work out what it is you're going to, what it is you're going to focus on. So the purpose of today's ride is uh, getting my speed right, so going into a 30 limit, for example, from a 60 from a national speed limit in the UK, uh, using my brakes, not leaving it till the last minute to brake, but um, certainly leaving it a little bit later than I was. Uh, the aim really is that uh, I've been um, building up pressure behind me because uh, cars are sort of coming into these zones and uh, slamming on the anchors right at the last minute, if at all. Uh, most cars don't slow down to 30 and 30 limits in the UK if I'm honest. So it's, uh, I think it's all about accelerate, what, what they call acceleration sense really, it's about just ma managing that throttle really. And I think as part of that as well, learning to, uh, to trust the bike. So I know my cornering's coming up, I know where I've come from, I know that I am, I am better than I was, but uh, I know I've still got a long way to go. And as, for me, it's, uh, as I keep repeating really, it's as much about getting the feel of the RT as it is about uh, the, uh, the road craft. So I have to walk a very fine line between the two because when you've come back after 30 odd years, 37 years you know there's so much to learn so um, you'll see a bird of prey here look oh. just interrupted a bird of prey there attacking a small bird, let's hope he gets away yeah so it's not just about slowing down it's also about coming out of a a sort of a low speed limit, let's say a 30 mile an hour limit into a national speed limit up to a 60 and getting away quickly, building a, a buffer between myself and the people behind. So, so the purpose of today's ride I think is mainly to work on that uh, but I'm also conscious of the fact that Dave mentioned on Sunday the fact that uh, on right-handers I still have a tendency to be too close to the centre line, too close to the crown and actually I should be getting away from oncoming traffic if it's there. If it's not there it's not a problem. But if it is there, I need to get away from it. So just a couple of things to, uh, to work on today, really. As you can see here, there's quite a lot of mud on the road. You know, it's, um, this is quite, uh, if I was uh, over at any kind of angle today, that might be a problem if the road was damper as well. Okay, so here we go. Here's up where I would have used engine braking in the past, but now I'm braking down to 30. So using engine braking would have been fine in one sense, saves your brake pads, doesn't it? Saves money, but it, if anybody's following you behind from a car, then uh, it doesn't give them information. And the, <coughs> excuse me, the I am a very keen on this, what they call the tug principle, take cues and give information. So by using my brakes, I'm actually giving information to the car behind that I am slowing down to 30. If there was no car behind, I could quite happily use engine braking. So again, that's a habit I have to break. And really the point of starting IAM as, uh, as soon as I have, you know, I did think about maybe leaving it for six months or a year, but I thought if I left it six months or a year between buying the bike and starting the advanced course, then that might give me time to develop some bad habits. So, so the point is I'm not developing, hopefully, haven't ingrained those habits too deeply at this stage. So I'm, uh, I'm an open book in that sense. So here we are, we come to a no speed limit now, a national speed limit rather, so let's accelerate safely away. But again, the distance we can see to be safe, it was blocked off by a, a blind summit there. And also by uh, a reasonably sharp right hand bend, a little bit slippery underfoot because of the mud. So, but the aim is to make progress. So one of my uh, uh, subscribers mentioned that uh, the, the mindset, I think it was Motomania, has the, the mindset. Um, of a uh, almost like a crouching tiger you know you've got to be 
in one sense as a motorcyclist quite predatory looking to make progress all the time whilst balancing that against all the, um, the sort of safe riding uh, principles so it's it's a tension between the two and by instinct I'm not going to be one who's going to be throwing this bike around but at the same time I do recognize that as I've been riding too slowly then um, I do need to make bit, uh, better progress Yeah, the thing about uh, getting involved in an IM programme is you've always got something to think about when you're riding. You've always got something to work on. You've always got something to internalise. And as I mentioned on previous videos, you know, you, um, you go through this sort of uh, cycle of unconscious incompetence where you don't know that you're doing something badly. So, for example, before Sunday, I didn't know uh, that I was using engine braking inappropriately where I should have been using brakes. So now Dave's made me aware of that, so I then go into a stage, as you probably saw if you watched uh, the IAM3 Observed video, of um, conscious incompetence. So I can't do it, but at least I know I can't do it. And what I'd hope to get to over the next few weeks is a state of maybe conscious competence. I'm doing it, but I still have to think about it. And where many of you folks will be, you know, you've got more experience, more hours in the seat than I have maybe you've never had a, a break in your riding but maybe now you're at the stage of actually doing it without anybody else to think about it which is actually the right place to be okay so I'm coming out of a 40 now into an NSL national speed limit didn't want to accelerate too hard there because I didn't want to accelerate into a around a corner where I couldn't actually see what was coming so it's always checks and balances it's always um, working out that formula for that particular situation But of course you never got to forget the golden rules stopping in the distance you can see to be safe so here we are there's a 30 coming up so I'd have just used engine braking a week ago and here I am now I'm on my brakes and when I cross that 30 line well I'm, again I made the mistake I should have been doing 30 and I was doing 25 okay which again frustrates anybody following me so that's something that needs work isn't it but as uh, Dave encouraged me on uh, Sunday Bit of a hazard there, as Dave encouraged me on Sunday, that's just really practice. Hazards everywhere in the country, as I guess there are in town as well. Horse, I've had a left that another 20 seconds, I'd have had a horse in front of me. Got to be switched on all the time. So here we are then, we're coming from a 30 into a no speed limit, national speed limit. So again, let's accelerate, let's do the, uh, the crouching tiger. One thing I must never do though, I understand the, um, the principle of making progress, but the one thing I must never do, I know, is uh, ride beyond my um, ability. Because I still am getting the feeling of this bike, particularly at lower speeds interestingly. 
but I don't want here to bend at 60 miles an hour that I should really be taking at 45 and suddenly find I've got to cream off 15 miles an hour halfway around the bend it's too late then right so here we are again so we've got a 30 coming up I'm in third okay let's break okay 27 that was better wasn't it but it should have been 30 really when I hit that shouldn't it consciously incompetent Cannons Ashby again, place I've taken you through several times so important isn't it when we're on the bike to enjoy the landscape this wonderful history and scenery we've got around us we can explore on these mach wonderful machines we ride Bit of a rough road surface there. Right, here we are then, so from a 30 to a 60. And again, the advice from my instructor on Sunday was make progress, build. You've got cars behind you, it's your chance on a bike to use the acceleration and get away from them. Build yourself a bit of space, put it in the bank. Get away from them. Okay, so now we're back into a, a 30. This is why I picked this route today. So again, let's let's break down. Okay, so 27, 28. That's better. And I imagine I've almost got to be able to do that almost without probably looking at the speedo as well. I know I can in my car. I more or less know to the nearest two or three miles an hour what I'm doing in my car without looking. You see, as a trainer, you, um, well, often, often you hear, don't you, practice makes perfect. It's actually not true. Because if you're practicing something that's wrong, then you're going to internalise a really bad habit. And once you've internalised it, it's so much harder to, to dig it out of your sort of, uh, dig it out of your thinking, out, dig it out of your muscle memory. So the, uh, the correct uh, phrase actually is practice makes permanent. So when you practice something, uh, practice with a purpose and practice to a really good model. Make sure you're getting really good advice before you actually commit it into your um, into your sort of computer banks. Another risk in the countryside. Pheasants at the moment. Plenty of those around. Hopefully we'll find a couple of roundabouts on this run as well, we will a little bit later on. Because again I'm being criticised at the moment for taking roundabouts too slowly and building that pressure on me. But I'm not going to go around them faster for the sake of going faster. I can only do it if it's safe to do so. Whilst balancing the risk behind me i.e. the guy who's getting impatient and wants to uh, press on and sits about six feet behind my, uh, my rear light. Constantly scanning now for potholes, pheasants, there goes another couple. Mud as well. Keeping away from the HGV. over the hedge
Concentrating now through these bends on keeping away from oncoming traffic on the, uh, on the left handers. And I've got to balance the risk, divide the risk between the oncoming car and uh, the advantage of getting a better view around the corner. That's better, 30 miles an hour. the NSL, get rid of this guy behind. Opened up the gap. Right, good chance to practice my roundabout skills here. Trust the bike they keep telling me. Come on then bike, don't let me know. There we go, and then get out of the roundabout quickly, was the instruction, which is hopefully what I've done there. That felt better. <laughs> 